Now, if I did a similar thing in the y direction, I'd get the y components of the matrix. And indeed, if there was more than one particle, these would just look like sums over i's, sums over i's, sums over i's. <laughs> And if these look like sums over i, then x i would go to x i plus x i, and then y i would go to y i. So if there were lots of particles in the system, all we would get is a sum over i, x i, y i, and um, this would give us a sum over i of n x i. In my example, like. And what's that? The conservation of momentum in the x direction for a system. So we get this result quite generally when x translation invariance, when there's a symmetry at the translation in x direction, then the momentum in the x direction will become certain. You should pause and think about that for a second. It's quite a nice deep result. If the physics is unchanged by moving in the x direction, it means that the momentum in the x direction is conserved. If the physics is unchanged by moving the system in the y direction, it means the momentum in the y direction is conserved. Interesting. Now, um, another one, of course, is rotational invariance. What happens if my system is invariant under the infinitesimal translation uh, rotation? Let's consider, for instance, a um, something in space where there's no gravity, because gravity adds to a certain direction and causes issues with rotational invariance. Well, we could do it on a horizontal table where gravity does not add to a direction, if you like. So let's, let's go on a horizontal table rather than in space. This space is not arbitrary. Uh, on a horizontal table, the space is not trapped in my You can quite easily see that this is the case. You can check it. 
Um, when you check the difference of any, the Cylons cancel, and everywhere else there's a derivative, and that cancels out the Cylons. So certainly it's this uh, variant of the translation of either theta or phi or both. Um, and that invariance leads us to conservation, conserved quantities, right? So you can work out those conserved quantities. It's always just going to be del L by del theta dot f theta 1 plus del L by del phi dot f phi. This guy will be conserved. Right. Is just rotating one of them a conserved quantity? Is this a symmetry? Yes. Angular momentum is conserved. 
Now, I've shown you here Lotus theorem as it is phrased in classical mechanics. Note that it felt that a lot more than just this. Um, she talked about Lotus, she, she derived the theorem for general differential equations, and she derived it also in quantum mechanics, where conserved quantities can mean so much more, where the knowledge that something is conserved can actually be used to build the theory from scratch. And that's actually how most modern texts treat quantum mechanics, building it from scratch via symmetries and conservation laws. Um, and you can do the same with classical mechanics. Very interesting part of the um, So, Noether's theorem is very interesting because it relates symmetries to conservation laws in a formal, real way. I really invite you to go home and play with this and find different symmetries and find different conservation laws for different Lagrangians. This is an example of where we use the principle of each action, like Wade said earlier. We use the principle of least action here in order to derive something new, something special about mechanics. Something that we couldn't have gotten just by our previous way of doing something unique to the principle of least action approach. We have one topic left in this course, and that's small oscillations. If we work too fast, we'll hopefully finish on Monday. <laughs> If we work slow, we have another Monday. We hope that we work fast on Monday. Um, we have to take a Energy is dependent on our height. The potential energy 
And, and indeed, a minimum in the landscape is also a minimum in the potential energy when we're using gravitational potential energy. Right, so if we start close to a minimum in potential energy, then it seems that things execute oscillations. If we start too far away from that minimum, then this guy's allowed to go all the way up. If we drop this guy down, he's going to go all the way over, and he's not going to oscillate. So if we start close to a minimum in potential energy, it seems that our system executes oscillation. And we can prove that. We can prove that. If the kinetic energy looks like a half k x dot squared, let's say, let's say that our one dimension looks like that, and let's say that my potential energy is any function of x, then near a minimum in that potential, what, how can I write the potential energy near a minimum? I can tell you it's that. Right? So I can write this as u is equal to u of the minimum plus what? Plus my distance from the minimum times by u prime of the minimum plus what? My half distance from the minimum squared u double prime of x naught plus uh, now if it's a minimum, what is u prime? Zero, right? We've been talking about this in an infinite dimensional context. It's certainly very easy, and it's easy to do in a one dimensional context. Um, u of x zero, we may as well also assume to be zero. Why? Because we can add any constant to u without changing the physics. So without changing the physics, I can make u zero. This is my zero line. Right? Um, so I can therefore write u near a minimum of potential as a half times by whatever u double prime of x0 is times by x squared plus order x cubed. Right? My minimum, my, near the minimum in potential, the potential energy looks like that, the kinetic energy looks like that, and we can write out the Lagrange equations. And what do we get? We get the Lagrangian is t minus u is a half Okay, yes, don't square. Minus, uh, half. Do you know what kind of x0 near a minimum if it's positive or negative? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, if I say mm, it's a negative, it must be it's positive, right? That is the same option. It's negative near a maximum. And it's positive near a minimum. That's your first order, second order sufficient condition, soft condition um, for a local minimum. So certainly when I write minus a half, u double prime of x0 is just some constant, some positive constant that I can write as big K times by x squared. Right, so that looks very nice, it looks all quadratic, and uh, when, we, when we work out the Lagrangian equation associated with that in one dimension, what do we get? We get k x double dot is equal to minus k x, right? d by dt del l by del x dot is k x double dot, well l by del x is minus kx. Right, what's important is that this big K is a positive number. So we're now write this out as x double dot plus k over k, over k, rule k, kx zero. Certainly the kinetic energy is always positive. You've never heard of a negative kinetic energy. It's always positive. So that little k is, is positive. And when you're a local minimum, so that big k is positive. Therefore, this thing here is positive. So this looks like x double dot plus something times x is zero. And that's a very well-known differential equation. What differential equation is it? Not quite dependent. Dependent is a sign there, strange moment here. It's a much simpler. 
This one's known as simple harmonic motion. Right. That's what you get when you analyze a string. It's what you get when you simplify the analysis from Kingston to be very close to its equilibrium position. Ooh, doesn't that sound like very close to the minimum of the edge? Haven't we done exactly this to Kingston to get it? Right, in fact, we have. Uh, and we'll do similar things to double page on Monday. But um, the point is that the solution to this is x of t is equal to a cos of t plus phi. And that's the solution, the general solution to this equation. By Monday, I want you guys to come to class understanding exactly why this is the solution to that. Right? I think there's a whole thing about this. I want you to understand exactly why that's the solution. I want you to be able to tell me what alpha is and uh, how you would choose A and phi given the initial condition. I want you to understand the differential equation very well. Because on Monday we'll start from there. Another thing that I need you to take home from here is we started here a minimum in gravitational potential energy. But this is much more general the solution. It doesn't matter if you start close to a minimum in a dip, ditch or if you have a general system that's close to a minimum in any potential energy. You'll get the same results. It will oscillate in a very special way. It will execute simple harmonic. Alright, that's all good.